I work uh, at the Institute for Organic Synthesis and Photoreactivity that is uh, uh, located in the research area of Bologna. And Bologna is a big city in the middle of Italy. Uh, it is a, it's a mid, uh, medieval city, uh, not also has the red city for the color of uh, its uh, roofs uh, and the fat city for its good uh, food. And uh, um, the, the research activity of the Institute for uh, Organic Synthesis and Photoreactivity uh, falls in the field of chemistry and material science and technology. Uh, so we mainly deal with sustainable chemistry, advanced materials and key enabling technologies, as well as nanotechnologies for technological applications in different fields. So I mean, transport, energy, cultural heritage, health and, and so on. And uh, as concerns my expertise, uh, so my, uh, I mainly deal with the extraction and purification of natural polymers uh, of biological and biomedical interest uh, and um, on their processing uh, in, into multifunctional biomaterials uh, for drug delivery and tissue engineering. And uh, in particular, my research activity is uh, uh, focused on uh, keratin proteins uh, obtained from byproducts of agro-food and textile industries uh, and on the processing of these keratin proteins uh, into nanoparticles by self-assembling and nanofibers by uh, electrospinning. And uh, so, as you know, keratin is a non-food protein, has high sulfur content, most abundant in nature, being the major component of wool, feathers, uh, arms and nails, uh, from mammals, uh, and uh, air, and uh, it is also pre present in the stratum corneum uh, of the human skin. And uh, keratin was this, so I mean uh, wool from dairy sheep or feathers and on uh, from, from battery uh, represent uh, important uh, renewable sources at low cost of uh, keratins. And uh, so uh, the, the raw wool, uh, no fit for spinning, deriving from uh, dairy sheep, uh, is uh, our uh, selected keratin, uh, source of keratin. And uh, in fact, uh, every year, uh, around 84 million dairy sheep are grown in, in uh, Europe. And the, the production of wool deriving from the, the shearing uh, the, of these sheep uh, account to more than 2,000 tons uh, per year. Uh, this wool is uh, a poor quality wool, no fit for spinning and so no fit for the textile chain. Uh, therefore, there is an urgent need of exploitation strategies for this wool voices in order to reduce the environmental impact deriving from their disposal and to promote at the same time a circular bioeconomy uh, model. Uh, so, which is our strategy? Mm. So we have uh, uh, optimized, we have set up and opti optimized uh, an extraction process uh, of keratin from these wool wastes uh, based uh, only on protein uh, denaturation and so which avoids uh, the uh, protein degradation. Uh, it consists uh, in a sort of disentanglement of keratin chain in, in the wool fibers. Uh, so this process uh, is able to provide uh, uh, a keratin at high molecular weight. Uh, that is uh, a full edge polymer, so uh, a new uh, biopolymer, uh, uh, biodegradable, of course. And moreover, uh, the sulfitolysis reaction at the base of the process uh, produces the cysteine S sulfonate keratin. So this keratin is also highly soluble in different solvents, uh, included water, and uh, it is processable into several kinds of structures. Uh, materials. Uh, unlike the commercially available hydrolyzed keratin, so widely used uh, for cosmetic application, uh, this keratin at high molecular weight uh, has been demonstrated to have a stimulatory effect on wound repair uh, because the extraction process preserves the amino acid sequences uh, typical of wool keratin and responsible for uh, cell. Uh, 
uh, adhesion, in particular fibroblast cell growth, um, due to the wide variety of amino acids composing the primary structure of this uh, protein, uh, this keratin is also an excellent carrier for uh, different uh, active ingredients. So I mean hydrophobic, hydrophilic ingredients, but also negatively and positively charged uh, ingredients. Uh, uh, moreover, due to the presence of uh, both hydrophobic and hydrophilic amino acids, the protein is also a natural emulsifier. And uh, due to the presence of thiol groups, uh, it has uh, antiox uh, antioxidant and so anti-aging properties. And due to the uh, high molecular weight, uh, it has also filming properties and excellent processability, as uh, I've told before. And um, so inspired by several uh, scientific papers focused on the use of, on the use of uh, uh, albumin nanoparticles as a carrier for uh, insoluble uh, uh, anti-cancer drug, we thought to test the, the potential of this keratin at high molecular weight uh, as promising substitute to albumin for this kind of applications. Therefore, we have developed different uh, um, drug-loaded keratin nanoparticles by exploiting the self-assembling properties of this, uh, uh, of this protein in different environmental conditions. And uh, so in this work, uh, we have uh, prepared uh, uh, chlorine E6 uh, loaded keratin nanoparticles by uh, self-assembling followed by cross-linking. So uh, in particular, uh, the, the, the chlorine 6 uh, that is the selected anti-cancer drug, uh, able to exert uh, um, a cytotoxicity towards ca cancer cell in the presence of oxygen and upon irradiation with visible light, was uh, um, uh, linked, uh, covalently linked to the keratin by exploiting the uh, amino groups of, of the protein. And then the uh, drug conjugated keratin uh, was transformed into nanoparticle uh, in different buffers at different pH, and the formed nanoparticles were uh, then cross-linked with glutaral diide. So in this way, we were able to obtain the drug-loaded keratin nanoparticles uh, was uh, hydrodynamic radius uh, ranges uh, ranged from 100 uh, to 200 nanometers on the base on the uh, environmental uh, pH. So these uh, uh, drug-loaded keratin nanoparticles uh, displayed an excellent uh, uh, ability to cross uh, the, the, the cell's uh, membrane and to accumulate in the cytoplasma of osteosarcoma and glioblastoma uh, cells line and uh, to uh, exert the cytotoxicity effect uh, when uh, upon irradiation with uh, visible light. So in, uh, instead, uh, by using the uh, self-assembling by hydrophobic aggregation method, according which the, the, the formation of uh, keratin nanoparticles uh, occurs uh, by self-assembling induced by the interaction between uh, an hydrophobic tract and the hydrophobic chains of the keratin, we were able to obtain different drug loaded uh, keratin nanoparticles, uh, having different hydrodynamic uh, ready uh, on the base of the chemical structure of the drug and on the base of uh, um, the loading of the drug itself. And uh, so has concerned the drug release mechanism, uh, studied by applying the pepa saling mathematical model on the drug release profiles, we found that the drug release uh, Occurs uh, is uh, uh, mainly fecal diffusion controlled uh, since the kinetic constant related to the fecal diffusion is, is in all cases uh, uh, significantly higher than the kinetic constant related to the uh, matrix swelling or, or matrix uh, uh, erosion. And finally, uh, we were also we, we, we prepared also drug-loaded keratin nanoparticle by ionic gelation, 
in this case, the formation of nanoparticles are caused by self-assembling uh, induced of the protein, uh, induced by the interaction uh, between a positive drug and the negative charges of the protein when it, it is at the pH higher than uh, its isoelectric point. And uh, in this work, uh, the doxorubicin uh, loaded, loaded keratin nanoparticles prepared by ion gelation, and so by using the doxorubicin uh, hydrochloride at pH lower than 7.4, were compared with the doxorubicin keratin loaded nanoparticles prepared by hydrophobic aggregation. So I mean by using uh, doxorubicin a pH higher than 9. This pH, uh, the doxorubicin uh, behaves like an hydrophobic uh, drug. So, uh, and as you can be seen by using, by using ion gelation, we were able to increase the loading of the, on, uh, of the drug on the uh, keratin nanoparticles, uh, uh, reaching uh, a drug loading up to 30% on weight. And uh, moreover, uh, unlike the uh, nanoparticle prepared, nanoparticles prepared by hydrophobic aggregation, the uh, nanoparticles prepared by ionic gelation displayed a pH sensitive drug uh, release. In particular, the drug release is faster and higher at pH 5 than at pH 7.4. And uh, this, uh, this is uh, a, desir a desirable uh, behavior for cancer therapy uh, due to the acidic conditions of uh, tumor microenvironments. And uh, also the uh, drug release mechanism, different at the different pH. In particular, we found that the uh, doxorubicin release is uh, uh, fecal diffusion controlled at pH 7.4 and matrix is well controlled at pH 5. Uh, then by using this keratin at high molecular weight, uh, we were the first to develop uh, uh, keratin, the pure keratin-based electrospan mats, so by using the uh, electrospinning uh, technology. Uh, in this way, we were able to obtain uh, a nanostructured material able to, to mimic from both the chemical and uh, structural point of view the extracellular matrix. Uh, thereby realizing a promising material uh, for biomedical applications, so, so uh, in particular dealing and uh, drug delivery. And uh, so specifically for uh, drug delivery, we have developed uh, three different uh, diclofenac uh, loaded uh, keratin-based electrospan mats. So diclofenac was uh, selected as a, a drug for the treatment of uh, anti-inflammatory processes. So in the first system, uh, the diclofenac was dissolved in the keratin after solution, and the solution was uh, electrospan into uh, nanofibers, and we obtained uh, defect-free uh, homogeneous nanofibers having a mean diameter of about 300 nanometers. Uh, in the second system, uh, the diclofenac was loaded uh, into the hydrogel sites. So hydrogel sites uh, are uh, double-layered metal hydroxides able to host negative molecules uh, between their lamelle, and the diclofenac loaded hydrogel sites were dispersed into the keratin solution, and the dispersion was electrospan into nanofibers, uh, also in this case. We obtained uh, homogeneous uh, uh, nanofibers with uh, a mean diameter of about 300 nanometers. But in this case, we observed some irregular shapes uh, along the fiber axis uh, due to the uh, embedded hydrogen sites. Uh, in fact, the, the, the dimension of uh, hydrogen sites is comparable to the dimension of the, uh, to the, the, the nanofibers uh, uh, diameter. So finally, in the third system, uh, the diclofenac was uh, uh, dissolved in a blend solution uh, made uh, containing the same amount of keratin and polybutylene succinate, uh, that is a polyester, biodegradable polyester FDA approved. And uh, the blend solution was prepared uh, 
by using uh, hexafluoroisopropanol as common solvent for keratin and polybutylene succinate. Uh, so notwithstanding the poor miscibility between keratin and polybutylene succinate, we were able to obtain homogeneous and effect-free nanofibers uh, uh, with the same mean diameters uh, of about 300 millimeters. And uh, so all these three systems uh, appear uh, as a freestanding uh, patches uh, made of uh, several layers of interconnected uh, nanofibers as shown uh, as can be observed from the surface and the fracture uh, section analyzed by the scanning electron microscope. And uh, these patches uh, have the, the, the uh, comparable uh, chem chemical, chemical physical properties in terms of thickness, uh, porosity, and specific surface area. And uh, uh, as concerned this well uh, ratio uh, evaluating physiological uh, condition, we found that the keratin nanofibers showed the highest swelling uh, uh, ability and uh, while the lower swelling ratio of the uh, hybrid uh, nanofibers uh, is probably due to the uh, reinforcing effect of uh, iodal sites, and the lower swelling ability of the blend nanofibers uh, is probably related to the poor swelling ability of polybutylene succinate uh, in, in, in physiological condition. Uh, as regards the biodegradability uh, in an enzymatic environment, uh, the, the uh, pure keratin nanofibers uh, showed the, the uh, fastest biodegradation rate. They degrade, they completely degrade within three days, followed by the hybrid nanofibers. So this behavior confirmed the reinforcing action of aerotal sites. And uh, then we have uh, the, the, the lowest biodegradation rate uh, is, uh, is shown by the blend uh, nanofibers. And in particular, in this case, uh, the uh, enzyme attacks only the keratin uh, fraction of, of the, the, the blend mats uh, as uh, suggested by uh, the FTR, uh, by the reduction of uh, FTR absorption bands asso associated to uh, the, the, the protein. Uh, as expected, uh, all these uh, three electrospan mats through the uh, uh, a good cell viability. Uh, the fibroblast uh, grew uh, scattered and formed a discrete group uh, on the on the electrospan mats, and uh, they show comparable cell viability of about 80 uh, percent within the first 24 hours of uh, incubation. Uh, so these uh, uh, mats, these electrospan mats, can be easily applied. Uh, uh, to the wet skin, and uh, they display the, uh, a good adhesion uh, because the adhesion occurs uh, uh, through the MOP adhesion mechanism, according which uh, uh, there is the formation of intimate contact uh, through swelling by wetting between the surfaces, uh, in this case enhanced by uh, the, the uh, nanostructure of, of the patch, followed by interpenetration and formation of the chemical bonds. And so the adhesion remains also in, in dry condition, and uh, therefore these kinds of uh, electrospan mats uh, um, are uh, also interesting and uh, for, for application in uh, for application uh, as a transdermal drug delivery system. Uh, as concerned the diclofenac release, uh, we uh, observed uh, that in the first hour, uh, the diclofenac release uh, is uh, higher in the blend nanofibers, followed by ivory nanofibers, and then by uh, pure keratin nanofibers. Uh, on the other hand, a lot a longer time, the diclofenac release is higher in pure keratin nanofibers, followed by hybrid nanofibers, and then by the blend uh, nanofibers. So, uh, as concerned the drug release uh, mechanism, we observed that the drug release uh, 
is a matrix is well controlled in the case of poor keratin nanofibers. Uh, this is due to the uh, good swelling ability of, uh, of this steel system, uh, while uh, the, the, the top napolines are cast by thick and diffusion in the case of uh, uh, hybrid uh, nanofibers and blend uh, uh, nanofibers. So, Okay, so uh, by, by exploiting uh, the, the uh, additive manufacturing of typical of the electrospinning process, uh, all these three systems can be properly integrated in one patch in order to realize uh, a patch with the desired functions. So I mean a patch with the desired uh, drug release profiles, the desired biodegradation profiles, and we can also propose a patch uh, for a combined therapy. So uh, I mean by, by loading uh, each layer with uh, different, uh, different drugs, uh, different desired and uh, uh, suitable drugs. And so before finishing, I would like to introduce uh, Kerline. Kerline is a spin-off of, of the nation participated by the National Research Council uh, that I have founded uh, with some colleagues of mine in 2017. And the the, the, the mission of the of Kerline is uh, the industrial scale production of high molecular weight keratin and the development of keratin based technological solutions for applications in several market sectors. And for the moment, we have patented the, the, the preparation process of drug loaded keratin nanoparticles and drug loaded keratin nanofibers, and we are interested in. Um, in the valorization of this patent in cosmetic and pharmaceutical uh, fields. And uh, so uh, I would like to thank, first of all, the organizing committee for giving me the possibility of this talk. I would like to, to, to thank my colleagues and, uh, and uh, Last but not least, all of you for, for uh, your kind attention. Uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, Annalisa, for this uh, very interesting uh, lecture. I really enjoyed a lot. Uh, we have a question that uh, uh, if liposome, uh, sorry, if liposomes are essential uh, for nanoparticles embedding or they are just a certain type? Sorry, can you repeat the question? Yeah, it is available in the chat that if liposomes are essential for nanoparticles embedding. Aerosol? Uh, uh, liposomes are essential for nanoparticles embedding. Sorry, I can I I, I cannot uh, understand the question. Uh, uh, me too. Uh, uh, what are the essential? Uh, uh, there is another question. What are the natural sources of keratin polymer, and how uh, separate them? The natural source of keratin. So we extract. Yeah. We extract keratin for, uh, from wool obtained from dairy sheep. So this wool is a waste of the, the dairy industry because uh, it, it, uh, poor quality of wool no fit for spinning. So it, it is a, a, waste, a waste to be disposed. And, uh, but um, uh, burning or, or landfilling are, are, uh, are unsustainable practices. Uh, uh, and um, so the, the, these byproducts are, are uh, these wastes, uh, the, the disposal of these wastes is a big problem of the uh, dairy industry. And, uh, and so we, we, we obtain keratin. So we, our strategy of, uh, of valorization of these wastes is to extract keratin from, from, from this poor quality of wood. Yeah, uh, you showed us uh, a video for uh, diffusion of uh, keratin. How how long does it take, take this? The, the extraction process? 
No, uh, when you apply it uh, onto skin, uh, how when, long does it, uh, how long it takes it to, uh, to absorb uh, this curtain? Uh, so uh, you mean when I, uh, when I apply the keratin? Yeah. Uh, okay, it, it depends. Uh, if I, I uh, apply uh, on the healthy skin, so uh, at, at, for example, for transdermal drug delivery, uh, it, it is not absorbed by the skin because this is a keratin at a molecular way. So uh, in this case, uh, uh, the protein forms a film on the skin. And so I use the protein as carrier for active ingredients. I don't know if, uh, if um, I well understood the, the question. Yeah. Uh, if I apply keratin in, uh, in a wound for wound healing, in this case, my protein is in contact with an enzymatic environment and it degrades uh, uh, within three days. Three days? Three days, yes. Yeah. Uh, for last question, are all of this uh, product uh, expected to be released to the market or uh, it's still um, on the research scale? Uh, okay. Uh, now, the, the mission of the care line is uh, uh, participated by CNR is the industrial scale production of this, uh, this keratin in order to, to propose in the market the, these proteins. Uh, so uh, for the moment it is not already available in the market but uh, we think to, to, uh, to do that uh, the next year. So we are ready to to propose uh, this, uh, this uh, new biopolymer in, to the market next year. Yeah, perfect. Okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, Annalisa. So now we have uh, a break for uh, 20 minutes and we'll, we will come back at uh, 4.30 uh, Egyptian time. Thank you.